Welcome to match number three in our Grixis Tamio League. So um, we won the first two against Beanstalk, even if it was only on time, and the second uh, against UB Shadow. And now we have the third one, and we are playing uh, again against a blue black deck, but here we don't know it yet. We are on the draw. And we have a pretty good hand, we have two threats, so even if we get griefed or something, we can play the game. However, against fast combo, we don't have a force, but right now not so much fast combo around. We see basic island ponder, could be like shadow, scam, maybe high tide, but it's not much played. Or it could be uh, yeah, rescaminator or uh, just one of the tempo decks or a blue red De delver deck or maybe even like mine grixis delver and the opponent decides to daze my dragon switch channeler and that's fine by me because uh, dazing a one drop early in the game means that it's kind of reverse who is on the play and on the draw because now i am one land up and fortunately i also draw more lands so even though the opponent tries to cheese me on lands it doesn't really work and I can just play uh, the second Dragon Switch Channeler and the opponent here again tries to cheese me off my lands with the second base land but I have another and now um, it's better to play a spell first so what do I have? I have creature and land so it would be probably best to fetch a volcanic island and ponder and hope for an instant on top and then what could also be a Mishra's bobble somewhere in the ponder so let's see what we get we have see a wasteland and i think we want to get rid of the wasteland because we need the black source but i here decide to keep it um to at least, I don't know why I kept it, but it also makes kind of sense if the opponent is low on lands, then maybe to, uh, and also the basic island. No, I think in hindsight it was bad because opponent showed me basic island. But anyways, I see Psychic, Frog, Underground, Sea and Wasteland. So next turn I definitely want to play Frog, but I don't want to expose it to Wasteland. So probably play the Underground Sea right now after the attack and then I could even brainst uh, I could even also play underground sea and brainstorm I mean then I would draw the card that I draw of brainstorm for two extra damage but most often that's not worth it but I ah, right I couldn't play uh, another land because of the wasteland sorry forgot that okay now it's here my turn I attack first but maybe, yeah, I could also play the Psychic Frog first, but if the opponent has removal, I prefer if the opponent, for example, Fatal pushes my Dragon Switch Chandler and not the Psychic Frog. On the other hand, if the opponent like forces the frog, I have another card in the graveyard, but I have a creature already, so it doesn't matter now. Okay. So this is the best order, probably. The opponent also has a Psychic Frog. And now here I make a mistake uh, in that I think, okay, uh, okay, first, first comes the not mistake. I draw a wasteland that I saw before, and at least I can play around days. That's nice, even though I cannot wasteland much. So uh, I see a ponder, put it into the graveyard, and. Uh, because I have so many cantrips already. The opponent forces the Molten Collapse and now we have three cards in hand, which means it's kind of neutral with, with the frog. And my thought in this point is okay, if we trade our frogs and discard our hands, I'm ahead because I have a land more and a Dragon Switch channeler more, but I make two big mistakes here. The first is that I forget that the opponent then can attack back first and draw two cards and if one of the two cards is a removal or one of the three in hand is a removal I'm in a pretty bad spot and the second one is that in the game I didn't have a stop in the blocking phase I think the interface shows my current setup I not how it was in the time so I don't even get to discard cards so it's like a double mistake 
and opponent immediately punishes me for it, attacks me, draws the card and then it's fatal pushed. Um, also, I think it was a mistake to uh, to wasteland the, the underground sea. I mean, if the opponent has a daze, they can maybe daze in response to my cantrip. Uh, but generally it's better to not waste a tapped land because you can maybe get more information. But yeah, days would maybe be an option. Okay, now I'm trying to activate the, the Dragon Switch Chandler and I draw three lands and I probably want to get rid of two of the lands because three lands is okay for Delver. I mean, this is a bit of a different, difficult mana base, so maybe four lands is actually enough. But I can just keep the two lands on top, and then if the opponent wastelands lands me again, then okay, I can uh, not shuffle. But uh, here I instead play this one and get rid of the lands. Uh, okay, that's also a possibility. And bounce the frog. But now in hindsight, I'm not sure if that was the correct play. Because if I get wasted off of black mana, it could be an issue. But at least uh, the lands are shuffled away. That's like the primary purpose. Also, the, the card drawing is stopped for a moment. Um, I have Tamio and I can now attack and offer the opponent a trade. Uh, my Dragon Switch Chandler for the for two cards of the opponent and I don't value my two cards that much. But I'm also not sure if it was correct in this case because the opponent can decide whether they take three damage or this card, two cards. I see the opponent has a force of will, so I think okay, maybe it's good because if the opponent wants to kill my Dragon Rage Chandler, they have to discard two cards and uh, may not have the removal then. Okay, and uh, yeah, opponent discards Doughty Voidwalker. Okay, that's a pretty good card in uh, Tempo Mirror and also Stifle and kills the frog. So yeah, I'm not sure if that was correct here, but at least it makes uh, it converts my Dragon Switch Chandler into kind of a Hymn to Turash for one mana. But the Psychic Frog is also bigger for the following turns. So yeah, it's uh, hard to evaluate what's uh, good here. Opponent plays a Orcish Bowmaster, so I have to uh, play a Brainstorm right now probably to flip my Tamio. On the other hand, then Tamio just goes to two and dies immediately. That's probably not worth it to flip Tamio here. So, uh, yeah, what I, do I do? But still, I would get rid of the brainstorm, but I don't do it here and decide to keep it and to, to keep the Tamio alive. And also, I'm not sure what happens if Bowmaster is in play and I play a brainstorm because um, it depends on what happens first. And I think the active player whose turn it is, so those abilities goes on the stack first. So of course, in this situation, it wouldn't make sense to brainstorm with the Bowmaster in the field, but to do it before. But generally, I think this can come up often. And please correct me in the comments, but I think if I do it in the opponent's turn, then um, both triggers go on the stack. If I play Brainstorm, the Bowmaster trigger, or opponent can target Tamio, but then Tamio triggers, and because mine triggers last as a non-active player, Tamio flips, and because the, it's, the flipping is an exile and comeback effect, it should fizzle the Bowmaster. But if, it, if I do it in my turn, it wouldn't work. Please correct me. If I got this wrong, but here, okay, I decide to not flip the Tamio, and it's a bit of a bad situation. But fortunately, here we have the, the Murktide region to bail us out, and that's what something that I think I play so much about uh, against blue black decks. And I think the Grixis decks they have something going for them or the blue red because with dragon switch channel it's so easy to fill your graveyard 
and also it's very easy th thus to play Merc type regent and often they play fatal push to counter like frog and uh, grief i mean not counter to destroy it and tamio and Merc type regent is a bit difficult it maybe they play one edict or something but even if they have an edict you can sacrifice something else and then um they often like they get cards with frog but if they don't have removal for merc tide then yeah merc tide can often steal the game and that's what i try to do here i play the 8 8 merc tide regent and now i have to just attack twice and win or the opponent can block with psychic frog but psychic frog is the best creature so yeah so i also i draw the frog that which is really cool so i attack opponent blocks and then i can um, flip tamio she instantly flips i plus two and now i'm in a really good position in this race because i have a the 8 8 merc tight opponent has to jump block and uh, yeah i'm also under not much threat because tamio removes so much pressure i only have to take care with the doughty void walker because sometimes you want to pyroblast the opponent's psychic frog for example and then you get the, the pyroblast in exile with the void counter this is a bit dangerous so it's quite tricky situation so opponent sacrifices doughty void walker here and what do i have in exile fatal push and brainstorm and opponent uh, tries to get an emergency brainstorm to somehow get rid of my murktide region i mean they also probably play something like a brazen borer but apparently did not no i'm not sure opponent attacks can hope to draw an emergency card an additional frog the frog can also block but I draw the Molten Collapse, which is protected by force, and then I can just attack for the win. And, yeah. and uh, we are on the draw, but we have threats, which is good. We have only one colored source, so we are a bit success, uh, susceptible to Wasteland. But uh, yeah, we can find back, fight back with Bolt and Pyroblast as long, as long as we have the mana. So here we play Misty Rainforest and now we can, we have two options. We can play the Dragon's Rage Chandler or the problem is because of Wasteland, maybe we want to keep it open, but then, yeah, I'm not sure what the right play is. Normally I try to always uh, lead with Dragon's Rage Chandler and that's what i do here also yeah because i think they don't have so many threatening turn two plays that i need to pyroblast i mean i want to pyroblast the frog but then i can also do it all the way down if they play baleful tricks is of course better, better to counter but yeah if they want to wasteland me then also it's better to just get the threats down as early as possible and so now I play the second second volcanic and I don't have enough lands yet, uh, uh, cards in the graveyard for Murktide Regent. And I'm not sure, maybe I should have played the Wasteland, but this way I can have Pyroblast and Bolt open. And yeah, I want normally to use the Pyroblast on Murktide Regent or on something else like a psychic frog but in this case it's a bit strange timing and end of turn i think maybe uh opponent doesn't have lands or something and i just use it right now also it can happen against blue black that they only have black spells and so i thought okay and i fill my graveyard that's also good so i can play a murktide regent um, now i have six cards in total like graveyard and play so I cannot play Murktide Regent yet, but I can uh, hope to Lightning Bolt something. I mean, if the opponent doesn't do anything, I could just Lightning Bolt the opponent's face and then uh, play Murktide, which would also then be a 5-5. Five five. And I'm also Daze Proof, so I do that.
Yeah, it's a bit of a risky play, but because the opponent didn't do anything, I thought, okay, maybe I need to be quick before the opponent can recover. Unfortunately, the opponent has a brazen borrower, so this didn't turn out so well. And uh, at least I can now bounce the Orcish Bowmaster, so I can play my cantrips and then hopefully uh, next turn maybe play another Merktide region. So I'm tapped out. We both have uh, Brazen Boros in exile. We have two cantrips in the graveyard. And so this is five, six, seven. We can actually play the Merktide regent in two days. And the opponent just plays Orkish Bowmaster, doesn't show us a days. And yeah, opponent has a full, nearly full grip of six cards plus the card in exile. But apparently for the blue-black decks, it's quite difficult to handle Murktide Regent. Ah, and for sideboarding, I brought in the spell peers because I thought I want to pre, uh, protect my creatures. Uh, they're really high quality creatures in this matchup, um, especially Tamio and uh, Frog and Murktide. And I only boarded out one Force of Will because I thought, okay, normally in Tempo Mirrors you want to get rid of the forces because it's card disadvantage. But because the, the threats, Psychic Frog and Tamio, uh, because they give so much card advantage, I think the paradigm has changed a bit. And so instead I took out three Mishra's Bobble because I think, okay, I also don't want to draw cards into Orkish Bowmaster. And yeah, the Force of Negation I always take out. And I thought, okay, let's try it like this. So as always, I bring in against Tempo the two counterbalances and the, the Red Blast. So here it's two counterbalance and three Red Blast and the Spell Pierce. And I think here in this point, I also get the opponent with the Spell Pierce. So, but first I attack. Ah, oh, no, I don't. Don't kill the Bowmaster. Okay, I don't have a cantrip there. <laughs> it's interesting. Sometimes you, you think back to your games a few days ago, but you were much more concentrated in the game and then you see the things better. Or sometimes you see you see things clearer afterwards. Okay, so I can now just flash in my brazen borer to push damage because opponent is already at 10. So I hope I don't forget it. No, I don't do it. Okay. Let's play the Brazen Borer here. And opponent wastelands me. I don't know why. Uh, because I just float a blue mana, which is always good. If you get wasted on an untapped land, maybe the opponent hopes that I uh, forget to float mana. And I get rewarded for playing tightly here. Opponent plays Fatal Push and I use the mana for Spell Pierce. So the, the Wasteland never got the opponent the op opportunity. And uh, if I went, if opponent did it in the untap uh, upkeep, of course, the lands would have been untapped. And now I have here a bunch of damage, eight damage in the air. And I could even four, five, six. No, I cannot, but soon I can even grow the Merktide. And uh, yeah, I could now collapse the Bowmaster so I can use the Bauble, but actually this is a game that's nearly won and I don't really need to draw a card and I can just keep the collapse for uh, if the opponent also plays some big threat I need to get rid of. Okay, yeah, that's it for match three, I think it was. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, feel free to uh, watch the others. I also made a video with uh, another Grixis League, um, with Grixis Delver instead of Grixis Tamio. And yeah, feel free to keep uh, posting comments because I'm not a Delver expert by any means. I just try to get better with the deck and yeah, there's so many lines. Uh, yeah, feel free to give me help to get better. See you in the next match.